Our scripture passage this morning comes from the second chapter of Nehemiah, verses 11 through 20. Listen, hear, and receive God's word. So I came to Jerusalem and was there for three days. Then I got up during the night and a few men with me. I told no one what my God had put into my heart to do for Jerusalem. The only animal I took was the animal I rode. I went out by night by the valley gate, past the dragon spring and to the dung gate. And I inspected the walls of Jerusalem that had been broken down and its gates that had been destroyed by fire. Then I went on to the fountain gate and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the animal I was riding to continue. So I went up by way of the valley by night and inspected the wall. Then I turned back and entered the valley gate and so returned. The officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing. I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, and the rest that were to do the work. Then I said to them, you see the trouble we are in? How Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned? Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem so that we may no longer suffer disgrace. I told them that the hand of my God had been gracious upon me, and also the words that the king had spoken to me. Then I said, then they said, let us start building. So they committed themselves to the common good. But when Sambalat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official and Gershom the Arab heard of it, they mocked and ridiculed us saying, what is this that you are doing? You are rebelling against the king? Then I replied to them, the God of heaven is the one who will give us success, and we his servants are going to start building. But you have no share or claim or historic right in Jerusalem. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. After receiving word that the exiles who had returned home to Jerusalem and the Jews who remained there were in trouble, and that the wall of the city had been broken down and the gates of Jerusalem had been burned, Nehemiah was in despair. He wept, mourned, fasted, and he prayed to God. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open. And as he prayed, rather than stressing the disgrace of the city, Nehemiah acknowledges that the people of Israel have broken God's commandments and their unfaithfulness to God has resulted in them being under the authority of a foreign king. Nehemiah is an Israelite in captivity, serving as a cupbearer to the king in Persia when he received this news from home. This unnamed king who had earthly authority and dominion over Nehemiah was the one who he had to ask to allow him to go back to all of the people of God who were in captivity and those who remained in the city. But before asking for the earthly king's permission to return home, Nehemiah petitioned his God, who has all authority in heaven and on earth. And he concluded his prayer with, give success to your servant today and grant me mercy in the sight of this man. Nehemiah was grieved over the condition and disgrace of his beloved home and disappointed that the people of God in Jerusalem had not moved to rebuild the city. The king granted Nehemiah's request and gave him the documents he needed to pass safely through the various territories as well as to acquire the supplies that he needed to rebuild the city and to uplift and rebuild the community and the consciousness of the people of God in the process people who, it appeared, had all but given up their hope. The environmental ministry team of the ELPC Justice Committee is reading the Intersectional, intersectional Environmentalist, How to Dismantle Systems of Oppression to Protect People and Planet, written by Leah Thomas. She is a black female intersectional environmentalist, environmentalist who writes, we can't serve the planet without uplifting the voices of its people, especially those most often unheard. We should care about the protection of people as much as we care about the protection of our planet. These fights are the same. 
Environmental practice, caring for the earth, means caring for its people, end of quote. Many communities of color are living unprotected in these United States of America. The Dogwood Alliance reports it's five times more likely for black children to have lead poisoning from proximity to a waste site than a white child. Even wealthy black families are more likely to live next to a waste site than low-income white families. Black Americans are exposed to 56% 50, more pollution than they produce. Latinx people are exposed to 63 more pollution, percent more pollution they, than they produce. And white Americans are exposed to 17% more pollution than they produce. And Native Americans, indigenous people, are also suffering constant environmental injustices. Nehemiah makes his way to the city accompanied by army officials and the king's cavalry, and he encounters opposition. Officials Sambalat and Tobiah, whom the Persian king has given authority to govern in the area, are displeased that Nehemiah had come to seek the welfare of the people of Israel. Now, I stopped by to warn you all this morning that everyone will not be on board with the work that God has assigned to our hearts and hands especially when that work is to seek the welfare of oppressed people and communities that are only seen as the means to an economic end. Leah Thomas comments, social injustice and environmental injustice are fueled by the same flame, undervaluing commodification and exploitation of all forms of life and natural resources, from the smallest blade of grass to those living in poverty and oppress people worldwide, end of quote. Knowing that he has opposition on the third day after his arrival under the cover of darkness, Nehemiah sets out with a small contingent to survey the damage in the city. Collecting all the data and understanding the work we are about to undertake is necessary. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus shared a vital principle about taking on a cause or a task when he said, for which of you intending to build a tower does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether you have enough to complete it. Now Jesus was talking about us being aware of and counting the cost to follow him. But people of God, I want to, want to warn you that it may cost us something to seek the welfare of disenfranchised people. It may cost us something to take on powers and authorities, big business and economic engines for the good of the people, and to declare that people have the right to breathe, breathe clean air, to drink uncontaminated water, to eat uncontaminated food and play in yards that have been altered and destroyed by the products of manufacturing. Children should not have to play in those areas. Counting the cost, Nehemiah goes on goes out on his nighttime recognizance to ascertain the damage to the city and to devise his plan to get the inhabitants of Jerusalem on board to help rebuild it. One commentator writes, Nehemiah has come to the city that symbolizes the presence of God, but in its present state it also symbolizes uncertainty over the continuation of the community that calls itself God's people. Nehemiah goes on an inspection tour to investigate the extent of the damage, and he goes out on his own to become more clear about the necessary repairs, end of quote. Leah Thomas, who, from the St. Louis area, who is from the St. Louis area, was studying in California at the height of the unrest in Ferguson after the murder of Michael Brown, and she writes, how could I think about the Clean Air Act when my community was burning with smoke and tear gas? Why was I entitled to clean air, water, and an abundance of nature in this privileged and wealthy Orange County community when places like Ferguson around the country were not? This kind of disparity persists, persists not only in times of unrest, but in general." End of quote. Now, Nehemiah makes it clear, Jerusalem lies in ruins. Jerusalem is a disgrace. Jerusalem needs to be rebuilt. Nehemiah rallies the people by assuring them that God has granted them favor and that the king has given his support. 
Hearing this, the people declare, let us start building. The people have thrown off their apathy and complacency, and they are ready to be about God's build business, to rebuild the ancient ruins, to raise up the foundations of many generations. They are ready to be called the repairers of the breach, the restorers of the streets to live in. Now, as often occurs when we speak truth to power, throw off the spirit of defeat, or when we organize and challenge systemic structures and institutions, or when we prepare to walk into our righteous, righteous God-ordained destiny, opposition and trouble arise. Samballat, Tobiah, now joined by Geshem, begin their campaign of mockery and terror, and they accuse Nehemiah and the people of civil disobedience and being in opposition to the king. After the deaths of Michael Brown and George Floyd and witnessing environmental injustices and devastation in communities of color, Thomas writes, advocating for human rights, for the human rights of my people and so many other oppressed identities worldwide simply cannot be optimistic. We have the potential to make a greener, safer, and more equitable future for everyone. If we want to see more inclusive movements, she writes, we can unite to create them and forge a new future for environmentalism together. End of quote. Declaring that the most important relationship of the people is their relationship with God and their, their dependence on and faith in God's power and authority, Nehemiah does not respond to the accusations of his accusers. Instead, Nehemiah boldly declared, the God of heaven is the one who will give us success. And we, God's servants, are going to start building. Thomas writes, we can create our own environmentalism that is intersectional in nature, that truly advocates for the protection of all people and the planet. An environmentalism that allows people of color to have their stories told, their culture's value reflected in environmental education and their voices heard in environmental movements, organizations, and policies, end of quote. Like Nehemiah, Thomas is calling for the people of God to stand up, to ready themselves to move, and to work to repair and rebuild their communities. God has given us the authority, the tools, and the audacity to speak with righteous indignation, to challenge social, environmental, and economic injustices. And in the words of Nehemiah, those who stand in opposition, those who seek to overthrow the will of God, they have no share or claim or historic right. Thomas writes, I, am true, I truly believe that day will come soon if we wake up to the realities of the climate crisis and environmental injustice and begin to unite and advocate for those unheard voices, the voices of people who face the largest threats of the climate crisis. I believe that we can create the intersectional future that we want to see, one that is green, regenerative, sustainable, and more equitable for all people, not just a select few. End of quote. People of God, it is time for us to decide where we stand on this Earth Day. Are we standing with the people who have been silenced, who have no authority or power, people who are forced by virtue of the color of their skin or social location, or who, or, or who have just merely grown weary? Or are we sitting in the seat of the scornful, accusing the victim, and standing with oppressors and polluters? Are we operating under the aegis of the kings of this world or under the authority and the grace of God, where justice, equality, equity, restoration, and recreation are possible and righteous? We are co-creators with God. God has given us the responsibility of being stewards over all of creation. And when we seek to be repairers of the fields, the mountains, the plains, and communities, we too, by God's grace, shall have a share, a claim, and historic right. May it be so. Amen.